This video contains content discussing violence, death, and murder. Viewer discretion advised. St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, is one of the most revered figures in Christian history. While some details of his life are shrouded in legend and myth, there are several commonly accepted facts about his biography. Here's a brief description of the biography of the Catholic Saint Patrick. Patrick was born in Britain, likely in the late 4th or early 5th centuries. He was born into a wealthy family with Roman citizenship, and his father was a deacon. At the age of 16, Patrick was captured by Irish raiders and taken to Ireland as a slave. He spent six years in captivity, during which time he worked as a shepherd. During his captivity, Patrick turned to his face for solace and strength. He claimed to have experienced a religious awakening, hearing the voice of God urging him to escape. After a perilous journey, Patrick escaped from his captors and returned to Britain. After returning to Britain, Patrick pursued religious studies and became a priest. He may have studied at monasteries in Gaul, modern-day France, before returning to Ireland as a missionary. Despite the dangers posed by his previous captivity, Patrick felt called to return to Ireland as a missionary. He arrived in Ireland around 432 AD and began preaching the Christian faith to the pagan Irish tribes. Patrick's missionary efforts were remarkably successful and, and he is credited with converted thousands of people to Christianity. He used familiar symbols and rituals from Celtic paganism to explain Christian concept, as such as the three-leaf clover to illustrate the Trinity. Patrick is said to have established churches and monasteries throughout Ireland, including his famous foundation, Armagh. He appointed bishops and priests to oversee the growing Christian community. Numerous miracles and legends are attributed to St. Patrick, including driving snakes out of Ireland, using the shamrock to explain the Trinity, and raising people from the dead. While these stories are often considered as symbolic rather than historical, they underscore Patrick's status as a revered saint. Patrick spent the latter part of his life traveling throughout Ireland, spreading the Christian faith, and consolidating the church's influence. He died on March 17th, around 461 AD, which is now celebrated as St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's legacy in Ireland is profound. He is credited with bringing Christianity to the island and is revered as the country's patron saint. St. Patrick's Day is celebrated annually on March 17th, both in Ireland and around the world, with parades, festivals, and religious observances. Despite the scarcity of contemporary records, St. Patrick's influence on Irish culture and Christianity is undeniable, and his legacy continues to be celebrated and honored centuries after his passing. The story of St. Patrick's capture by Irish raiders and his subsequent escape is one of the most compelling aspects of his biography, although details can vary in different accounts. Here is a brief overview of this event. St. Patrick, then known as Mjawin Sukat, was born into a Christian family in Roman Britain in the late 4th or early 5th century. When he was around 16 years old, he was captured by Irish raiders. 
Some accounts suggest that these raiders attacked his family estate and took him captive along with many others. Patrick was taken as a slave to Ireland where he was sold to a chieftain or landowner and put to work as a shepherd. This period of captivity lasted for about six years, during which time Patrick endured hardship and isolation. He later described this period as a time of spiritual awakening and conversion, during which time he turned to Christianity for solace and strength. According to Patrick's own writings, he received a vision from God urging him to escape from activity and return to his homeland. Heeding this divine guidance, Patrick made a daring escape from his captors. The details of this escape vary in different accounts, with some suggesting that he stowed away on a ship bound for Britain, while others describe a perilous journey by foot. After his escape, Patrick eventually made his way back to Britain, where he was reunited with his family. However, his experiences in Ireland had a profound impact on him, and he began to feel called to return to Ireland as a missionary to spread Christian faith among the pagan inhabitants. Upon returning to Britain, Patrick pursued religious studies and entered the priesthood. He may have spent time studying at monasteries in Gaul, which is now modern-day France, before embarking on his mission to Ireland. Around the year 432 AD, Patrick returned to Ireland as a missionary intent on converting the pagan Irish to Christianity. Despite the dangers posed by his previous captivity, Patrick was determined to fulfill his divine calling and spread the message of Christ throughout the island. The story of St. Patrick's capture by Irish raiders and subsequent escape is a central part in his legend and serves as a testament to his resilience, faith, and commitment to his mission as a spreading factor of the Christianity faith in Ireland. St. Patrick's iconography, like that of many saints, has evolved over the centuries. While some aspects remain consistent, there are variations in how he is depicted depending on the time period, artistic style, and cultural context. Here's just a brief presentation of some of the common elements of St. Patrick's iconography. St. Patrick is typically depicted as a bishop wearing the traditional vestments of the clergy. This includes a long robe, known as a cassock, a tunic, a stall, or pallium, worn around the neck, and a martyr, the ceremonial headdress of bishops in the Roman Catholic Church. In many images, St. Patrick is shown holding a pastoral staff, also known as a crozier. This symbolizes his role as a shepherd of the Christian flock and reflects his missionary work in Ireland. One of the most recognizable symbols associated with St. Patrick is the shamrock, a three-leaf clover. Legend has it that St. Patrick used the shamrock to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to the Irish people during his missionary work. Though it's a common misconception that St. Patrick banished snakes from Ireland, this motif is often included in his iconography. It symbolizes his victory over paganism and the forces of evil. However, it's worth noting that Ireland did not have snakes to begin with, so this aspect of his iconography is largely symbolic. St. Patrick is sometimes depicted holding a or standing near a cross, symbolizing his role in spreading Christianity throughout Ireland. 
In modern depictions, St. Patrick is associated with the color green, which has become closely linked to Irish identity and culture. This association is largely due to the celebration of St. Patrick's Day, where the color green is prominently featured. In some representations, St. Patrick is depicted with elements of Celtic art and design, reflecting his mission to convert the pagan tribes of Ireland and his efforts to incorporate local customs and symbolism in Christian practice. Another symbol associated with Patrick is the triquetra, a three-pointed knot or interlaced design. Like the shamrock, the triquetra is sometimes used to represent the Holy Trinity. While these elements are commonly found in the depictions of St. Patrick's, artists have interpreted his iconography in various ways throughout history resulting in a diverse range of representations across different cultures and artistic traditions. St. Patrick is associated with several miracles, though it's important to note that many of these stories are rooted in legend and folklore, and their historical accuracy is debated. Here's a brief presentation of some of the most famous miracles attributed to St. Patrick. Perhaps the most well-known legend about St. Patrick is that he banished all the snakes from Ireland. According to tradition, Patrick climbed to the top of a hill, uh, often identified as Kroger Patrick, and used a staff to drive the snakes into the sea where they drowned. While this story is widely circulated, there is no evidence to suggest that there were ever even snakes in Ireland after the last ice age, making this miracle likely symbolic of Patrick's supposed expulsion of paganism or evil from the island. Legend also has it that when St. Patrick arrived in Ireland, he was brought before High King Lahair at Taha. Despite the king's skepticism, Patrick performed a miracle by lighting a fire on the hill of slain during Easter Vigil, despite a law prohibiting other fires being lit before the king's own. This act impressed the king and his followers and led to the conversion of many. There are stories that attribute the power of raising the dead as well to St. Patrick. One such legend tells of St. Patrick bringing a man named Thethernach back to life after he drowned in a river. After being resurrected, Thethernach reportedly became a devout follower of St. Patrick. St. Patrick is said to have performed numerous miracles of healings throughout his life. In one story, he is said to have cured a chieftain's daughter of blindness by making the sign of the cross over her eyes. In another, he is said to have healed a woman suffering from paralysis. Legend has it that St. Patrick engaged in a contest of miracles with the Druids, the pagan priests of Ireland. In one story, when the Druids tried to use their magic to create a storm to disrupt Patrick's preaching, he prayed and caused the storm to dissipate, demonstrating the superiority of Christianity over pagan practices. One of the greatest miracles attributed to St. Patrick is his successful conversion of the Irish people to Christianity. Despite facing resistance and hostility from some quarters, Patrick is said to have baptized thousands of people and established churches and monasteries throughout Ireland. 
These miracles, whether historically accurate or not, have contributed to the enduring legacy of St. Patrick and his significance as a patron saint of Ireland. They serve as symbols of his spiritual power and the impact of his missionary work in Ireland. The process of sainthood, also known as canonization, is a formal recognition by the Catholic Church that a person lived a life of heroic virtue and is worthy of veneration as a saint. Here's the general process involved in the canonization for saint, someone like St. Patrick. The first step in the process begins at the diocesan level where a bishop can initiate an investigation into the life and virtues of the candidate of first sainthood. This investigation typically includes gathering evidence of the person's holiness, such as writings, testimonies, and any miracles attributed to their intercession. Once the investigation is complete, the bishop may petition the Vatican to open a cause for canonization. At this stage, the candidate is referred to as a servant of God. If the Vatican accepts the petition, the candidate's cause is officially opened and a thorough examination of their life and virtue is conducted by the Congregation of Causes of Saints, a department of the Roman Curia. If the congregation determines that the candidate lived a life of heroic virtue, they may be declared as venerable. This step does not require evidence of miracles, but focuses solely on the candidate's sanctity and moral character. To be beatified, the candidate must be associated with at least one miracle, typically a miraculous healing that occurs after prayers for the candidate's intercession. The miracle is rigorously investigated by medical experts and theologians to ensure its authenticity and that it defies scientific explanation. If the miracle is approved, the Pope may authorize the beatification of the candidate, who is then referred to as blessed. Beatification, sorry, allows for the limited veneration within certain religions or religious communities. The final step in the process of canonization is in which the candidate is formally declared a saint by the Pope. For canonization, at least one additional miracle, typically a posthumous miracle, must be attributed to the candidate's intercession and undergo the same rigorous investigation as the first miracle. Once the second miracle is approved, the Pope may proceed with canonization. Canonization allows for universal veneration of the saint throughout the Catholic Church around the world. In the case of St. Patrick, his canonization, excuse me, likely occurred through a more informal process as the current formal canonization procedures were not fully established in the early centuries of Christianity. Instead, Patrick came to be venerated as a saint through popular acclaim and devotion with his cult spreading throughout Ireland and beyond over time. Eventually, he was officially recognized as a saint by the Catholic Church and his feast day March 17th is celebrated by Catholics around the world.